Now, Italy's Prime Minister has warned Europe will be overwhelmed by migration unless the EU finds solutions. Italy currently receives the largest number of people smugglers, boats carrying asylum seekers and other migrants into Europe. Many people then try to travel on to countries including Germany, France or the UK. Our correspondent Mark Lowen has been to two border locations where migrants are trying to cross. Preparing, they hope, their footsteps to freedom. They trod the long path of desperation to Europe, but even now in Italy they want to go on to France and beyond. Numbers here have doubled since last year, armed with their dreams and kit from this charity to cross the tough Alpine border. I come with myself. Omar from Nigeria went via Libya, paying smugglers $800 to reach the southern Italian island of Lampedusa. His aim? To get to Britain. I just want to have a good life uh, to study there. But have you not seen all the pictures and have you not heard about people being sent back from Britain or sent back from France? Yes, I am seeing, but uh, you know, uh, I will just try my best to do. I will try again to go. Some fail early. An Egyptian is sent back. But the checks this side are rare. Volunteer Elena says the Italian police seem to turn a blind eye. They know exactly what we do here. They know exactly what these people are here for. So it's, it's like a game somehow. They know, but they, they pretend not to know. A short bus ride and they're at the border. But most avoid the official crossing, fearing police. Instead, they scatter into the forest, waiting to dash over the Alps. The pull of Europe leads through perilous paths that have already taken the lives of some seeking new ones. Others try a different route across, further south in Ventimiglia, close to Nice. But on the French side, controls are stringent. Each train is checked, leaving no door open. It is a constant to and fro. The Italian authorities happy enough to see the migrants cross here into France, no longer their responsibility, only for the French police to say, we don't want them either, and to send them back across the border. But caught in the middle of Europe's game of cat and mouse are the desperate. They may have failed today, but whatever the impediment, it is likely they will keep on trying. The EU is not working. Each country is setting its own migration limits and Italy has to shoulder the burden alone. France suspended free movement at this border and we are forced to take back huge numbers, which is only slowing the flow to Calais in Britain, not solving it. Migrants have spat and urinated in the cemetery. We've reached our limit. We could become the Lampedusa of the north. In the Alps, the Red Cross helps ease the long, cold wait to cross. Europe is facing a new bottleneck here. And whatever its leaders seem to do, hope and determination are proving impossible to extinguish. Mark Lowen, BBC News, on the Italy-France border. Well, live now to Oxford, where we can speak to Nando Sigona, Professor of International Migra Migration at the University of Birmingham. Professor, welcome to you. Thanks very much for being with us. Well, Italy alone, mm -hmm. the number of arrivals is nearly double that of last year. Why? We've seen, uh, well, we have had COVID, we have had the food and energy crisis. We have had a series of events that have really sort of uh, destabilized the economies of several countries. If you look at the profile of the people that are crossing the Mediterranean and compare it with uh, the people that came like 10 years ago during the, the first so-called refugee crisis, you will see that there is many more countries that are involved. So there is clearly a sign of a broader global crisis going on that is producing these forms of mobility this, this time around. So are you saying that most of the migrants now heading towards Europe are, are economic migrants seeking a better life rather than fleeing war? No, I'm saying that there are causes that these are survival migrants, people that have been pushing out of the countries because of, of climate change. We have seen several instances of, uh, of uh, severe weather, weather, we've seen a sort of droughts, etc. So it, it's about how do you define refugees? It's clearly that we're seeing uh, new forms of migration, of desperation, and people try it because there is not much left for them back home. Um, so it's, it's, yeah, you can call it, these are people that are, pushing the boundaries are always a refugee at the moment, in a sense.
Italy's Prime Minister, as we heard in that report there, is warning that Europe will be overwhelmed by these numbers if something isn't done. I mean, we've got governments across Europe struggling with this issue. Are there any solutions, any policies in place that are working? The situation, I mean, if you look at the way that uh, Ukrainian refugees have been welcomed in uh, several European countries, you could see that that is uh, a good model uh, to think about in, in a way to plan the reception of people, migrants uh, and refugees. We can also say that at the moment, a lot of the tension we are seeing in Italy, it's very much also linked to, well, the forthcoming uh, European election and the tension with Germany and France that uh, we've seen in the last few months around these issues, the alliance of uh, Meloni with uh, Orban and sort of the right wing politician in Europe. So you can see how the tension is growing and migrants are often used as a, as a weapon in this sort of European wide political battle. Uh, yeah, this year alone, it's estimated two and a half thousand people have died trying to reach the EU. It's a staggering number, isn't it? Is that at all in any way putting people off from making often very perilous journeys? The, the thing that we need to know is where those uh, tragic accidents have occurred. The route between Italy, Tunisia and Italy is relatively short. It's about 99 miles. Uh, a lot of the people that died in the crossing drive from a much longer route, which is like the one that goes from the eastern of Libya towards Italy. Just uh, just mentioned, for example, the, the Pilos uh, shipwreck last June, where hundreds of people died in the space between Greece and Italy. So it's a relatively safer route, the one that uh, Tunisia, uh, from Tunisia to Italy. Partly, and this is where it become very interesting, is why we've seen this shift towards Tunisia in the last 12 months. One of the reasons is that because a lot of the resources of the European Union in the last uh, year or so have gone towards Libya and to work with the, the coastal guard in Libya. So they've moved the route uh, more uh, west towards Tunisia, where they, they basically they found the crossing relatively easier. OK, really interesting to get your thoughts. Professor Nando Sigona, thank you.